We begin our World Garden Tour in Italy, in the quaint hillside village of Settignano, overlooking Florence. It's here that Villa Gambaraia has inspired visitors for more than four centuries. This breathtaking Tuscan estate has also captured the hearts of its present-day owners, who meticulously maintain the gardens. When we stay here, it's another, I don't know, it's uh, enchanting. It's a kind of small paradise. And we're happy also to see how much interest is being provoked for the continuation of existence. And we are compensated by uh, the enthusiasm uh, shown by people when they come and visit us. Gambaraya is often referred to as one of the jewels of the Italian Renaissance. This stunning villa sits in the middle of a small triangular piece of land and is surrounded by distinctive gardens and beautiful vistas. Guests enter at the scenic north gate and travel down a narrow road that has changed little over the past 300 years. Gambaraya was originally built as a monastery for nuns who no doubt were inspired by the peace and beauty of the site. In 1610, it was transformed into a private villa where 70 to 100 acres of olive groves were maintained by its aristocratic owners. Today, the owners of Gambaraya proudly welcome visitors to their traditional Tuscan villa. The architecture emulates pure Renaissance detail with its handsome decorative accents. This classical estate forms the perfect backdrop to the festive gaiety of gardens. Here, clusters of pink hydrangeas dress up the simple wood doors, while old roses clamber up trellises, welcoming guests into the elaborate embroidery of the garden. It was here, in the formal garden, that the previous owners of Villa Gambaraya lavishly entertained their guests. The main garden, or parterre, is famous for its geometric grace and classical symmetry. Fragrant roses and sparkling pools of water please the senses. As you amble towards its concentric borders, the garden gracefully unfolds into a masterpiece of planning, structure, and natural beauty. Villa Gambaraya's gardens have been embellished and maintained by its many owners over the years. Marcello Matki completed the latest renovation after World War II. His passion for the gardens has become a family tradition. He was um, absolutely enchanted. He loved very much this place. This is why we considered as uh, successors, it was our duty to continue keeping it. You could never expect to be uh, the uh, owner of such a property without having the maximum care of preserve it exactly the same way as it was built, and especially as it was preserved by my grandfather for the last 40 years or so. The garden flows through formal arches into the Tuscan countryside. Stately olive trees border the cypress-trained loges, while beyond the garden's hedge, a dramatic vista reveals the Renaissance city of Florence through the mist. The trickling sounds of a fanciful fountain in the center of the parterre add soothing notes to the garden. The original private owner of Gambaraya assured a green future for his gardens by purchasing water rights of nearby streams. Successive owners used this water to add several tranquil ponds to the gardens. Today, water grasses and lilies give the garden an air of perennial freshness. As you make your way to the side of the formal parterre, another water garden catches the eye. This symmetrical space features borders fringed with tufts of variegated flowers, groupings of oleander and pink geranium. The inviting paths are lined with citrus trees. Walk along the star mosaic path and you'll find another dramatic surprise. A spectacular open-air drawing room of reflecting pools mirror a theatrical arcade of clipped cypress. 
the arcade semicircular pond of lilies was at one time a simple flower bed. It was converted a century ago by another royal owner of Villa Gambaraya, Princess Gita of Serbia. Some people believe the villa's name may have come from a reference to water creatures, as Gambaraya are sweetwater crayfish who live in the area's springs. Others think the name Gambaraya comes from the Gambarelli brothers, who were 15th century sculptors born nearby. Bordering the water garden is one of the most arresting features in Gambaraya. An amphitheater is surrounded by a magnificent loggia. This verdant archway is made of 25-foot cypress trees. Their twisted branches form a natural architectural wonder and serve as archways revealing the valley below. As you make your way to the far end of the garden, you'll come upon the statue of Diana, poised to protect the surrounding olive groves. The statue rests under a giant umbrella pine and was a favorite of Princess Gita. Its wide branches offer a shady, meditative spot. The statue of Diana also leads to the turf alley which stretches over 300 yards and serves as a connecting corridor between the parterre, the side gardens, and the villa. According to the owners, this lawn was used for horse games and bocce, an Italian bowling game. The green is renowned for the high ornamental retaining wall topped with statues and stone vases. This refined estate with its dedicated owners and caretakers continues to set a world standard for Baroque Italian gardens. When our World Garden Tour returns, we'll take you to the port of Antwerp in Belgium and show you a garden that was recreated from an artist's masterpiece. It's a whole block of shows that help you get... Our World Garden Tour now continues in Belgium and the port city of Antwerp. This lively cultured city in the Flemish-speaking part of Belgium was once the home of Peter Paul Rubens, a master painter of the late Renaissance. Much of Rubens' best work was painted at his home with its formal courtyard and Italian-style gardens. Today, Rubens' former villa and garden welcomes visitors from around the world. It's, of course, a unique situation that we still have the house with its garden for an artist who lived so long time ago. And this garden now looks as it was in Rubens' days, but it was altered in different times. And the big problem for the museum was to recreate a garden as it was in Rubens' days. In 1992, nearly 400 years after Rubens enjoyed these gardens, the city of Antwerp began an historical reconstruction. Returning the garden to its original state was not an easy task, as very little of the original garden remained. In addition, plants were given different botanical names in the 17th century, so to recreate an authentic garden with authentic plants took a lot of investigating. We started some excavations. We didn't find anything. But on the other hand, we know about the library of Rubens. And there, we found that Rubens possessed some books on gardening. In Rubens' gardening books, colorful flowers like foxglove were selected and replanted in the garden. The restoration designers also gathered ideas from images of gardens found in Rubens' paintings. Rubens never did a portraiture of a garden, you see. Nevertheless, in these images, we see fragments which are very useful and which tells us what kind of elements Rubens wanted to have in a garden. Rubens purchased this house in 1610 after he had spent eight years in Italy. It was in Italy where he found inspiration for his garden as well as his paintings. In his wedding portrait, A Walk in the Garden, we can clearly see the garden pavilion. Today, it is the only original element of the garden that remains. When you look at the architecture of his house, it's obvious that he tried to make 
a kind of link between the, the courtyard and the garden, the portico, the pavilion, it works all together. And this is one uh, the thing which he had, he had seen in, in Italy. The garden reveals its classic beauty as you move through the Italian pergola. Cloaked in grapevines and climbing roses, the fragrant pathway leads visitors to a typically Flemish planting scheme. In those days, you will find just one plant just to show it as a kind of piece of art created by, by nature. And of course, also illustrating the, uh, let's say, the, the level of knowledge of, of the master of the house. The efficient yet dramatic single specimen plantings include hibiscus, peonies, iris, and graceful white aruncus. Tidy flower beds are bordered by low boxwood hedges, creating inviting aisles for strolling visitors. Here, yellow marigolds and other old-fashioned annuals show off their vibrant blooms. And by the ivy-covered trellis wall, citrus trees and tropicals grow in pots that can easily be moved indoors for the winter. I think this, this garden meant a lot to, to Rubens. This is obvious. His garden was a kind of uh, decor in which he projected this dream. And I think, well, it was a part to, for him as an artist to create a place to re realize this dream about ideal life. Here in Rubens' garden, visitors can enjoy a quiet escape from the activity of the city. They can sample the delightful fragrances of roses, which grow abundantly along the formal pergola. The relaxing sounds from the trickling fountain recall an era of elegance and a time when a celebrated Flemish artist once enjoyed his classical Renaissance garden. When we return, we'll visit one of the world's most famous gardens, a grand city garden in New York, whose breathtaking floral displays rival those of the Netherlands and Asia. 12 tough realtors in one of the toughest real estate markets. Could it get any worse? I don't know. Bought and sold. Sundays at 10 on HGTV. Let's go outside. Coleman, the outdoor company. Get in gear this summer. Enter the Coleman Great Gear Giveaway. For details, visit Coleman.com. If you're looking to refinance, cash out equity, or purchase a new home, you can count on Ditech to provide a great rate and outstanding personal service. And get your conditional loan approval in minutes. Call 1-800-71-FIXED. I don't know what I'm looking for, but I know that I just want to look some more. And I won't be satisfied till there's nothing left that I haven't tried. Every dream kitchen starts with the right appliances. Find the top eight brands and all the planning tools you need at Sears.com. Sears, where it begins. It's the Budget Blinds $100,000 Style Sweepstakes. Look for your blue Valpak envelope for a chance to win the ultimate window coverings makeover or other stylish prizes. Sweepstakes ends June 8th. Visit BudgetBlinds.com for details or to find a consultant near you. If you're thinking about a new Pontiac, Buick, or GMC, come to McGuire in Little Falls, where there are no hassles, no stress, just the best deal every time. At McGuire, we know your time is valuable, so we make buying easy. We have hundreds of vehicles in stock at all times and guarantee the lowest price. No hassles, no stress. Just the best deal every time. McGuire Pontiac Buick GMC, Route 46 Little Falls, two miles east of the Willowbrook Mall. Oh, no! Who are we going to call? Diabetes! Well, 
buddy. Another victory for Dial Pest Control. Clinical strength. Secret. Strong like a woman. The next stop on our World Garden Tour is one of the most famous gardens in the world, the Brooklyn Botanic Garden. The Brooklyn Botanic Garden showcases 12,000 different kinds of plants in its 52-acre landscape. For more than 100 years, it's been a peaceful retreat for Brooklyn's residents and visitors. Since 1897, the Brooklyn Botanic Garden has been home to one of the most elaborate and eclectic collections of plants in the United States. Prior to the garden's construction, this property was a landfill site full of building rubble and debris. But today, more than 100 years later, it provides a tranquil, country-like oasis in the middle of the city. One of the great charms of the Brooklyn Botanic Garden is that we have many gardens within our entire garden. And one of our great treasures is our Japanese hill and pond garden. It was one of the earliest gardens to be built here on this site. And it was begun in 1914 and completed in 1916. It has all the classic features people think of in a Japanese garden, but in a truly beautiful setting. Visitors can enjoy the serenity of the garden from the central pond's winding pathway. The gentle, rolling landscape is graced with sculpted shrubbery, a dominant feature in classic Japanese gardens. Precision is one of the main characteristics of this garden. Each individual plant is meticulously cared for in order to maintain its perfectly sculpted shape. Some of the plants are pruned on a regular basis into cloud pruning, which is a technique where you come in two, maybe three times a year to trim the plants into a specific shape so that you have a very composed view as you look across the landscape. This artistic landscape is made complete with the ducks, turtles, and fish that take up residence here. In another part of the Brooklyn Botanic Garden, lily pools are bordered by vibrant colors, with a bed of flowering annuals on one side and beds of perennial plants on the other. The perennial beds are American-style borders, which means they feature a combination of woody plants, annuals, and bulbs mixed in with the perennials. So we've got some small flowering trees, lots of crepe myrtles, which show lots of summer color, Hydrangeas, which are blooming pretty profusely, some roses we've added in to show not only that you can grow roses in a, in a rose garden, but you can mix them in perennial borders. As you make your way across from the lily pools, the annual beds are putting on a show. Here, blooming bulbs like summer hyacinths and peacock lilies are bursting with rich color. In the springtime, this border is really transformed by 9,500 flowering tulip bulbs, so it's quite a sight in the spring. The color amongst the tulips ranges the whole spectrum of the color wheel from whites up to the darkest hues of, of purples and reds. The Brooklyn Botanic Garden showcases many breathtaking gardens that thrill the senses. One garden in particular has been planted to thrill all five of our senses. It's the Fragrance Garden. This was created in the 1940s with the site impaired in mind, so that the whole garden is filled with wonderful plants that are sensory plants. They're wonderful for the touch, but more important, they have wonderful fragrance, either in their leaves or their flowers. Several features make this garden special. Every plant marker includes information in Braille, so the site impaired can learn more about each flower. Also, the beds are raised, so the leaves and petals can be easily touched and smelled. There's also a little pool with a fountain that gives you some of that musical sound of water in the garden so that all of your senses can be pleased in this garden. The beauty and splendor of every plant here makes this one of the most popular spots at the Brooklyn Botanic Garden. Coming up next, we'll continue our tour and immerse ourselves in the Brooklyn Botanic Garden's spectacular rose garden. You'll find out which group of roses are the hardiest, and we'll even show you an easy way to create a rose arbor in your backyard.
We'll also show off the largest collection of cherry blossoms on display outside of Japan in all their glorious color. <laughs> My family really keeps me on the go. That's why it's important to have strong, healthy bones. So I treat my osteoporosis with Boniva, just one pill a month to help prevent fractures. Studies show after one year on Boniva, nine out of 10 women had better bone density. I know I did. And unlike weekly treatments like Fosamax, you only need Boniva once a month. With all I want to do, I'm glad Boniva is working for me. You should not take Boniva if you have low blood calcium, severe kidney disease, or cannot sit or stand for at least 60 minutes. Follow dosing instructions carefully. Stop taking Boniva and tell your doctor if you experience difficult or painful swallowing, chest pain, or severe or continuing heartburn, as these may be... As we continue our tour of the Brooklyn Botanic Garden, we find the Cranford Rose Garden in full bloom with Lilium Austin and Rainbow's End. Rows of dazzling colors create a picture-perfect setting. Yet this garden is not just a place to admire beauty. It's also a living laboratory where Rosarians are able to educate the public about these esteemed flowers. For example, many old-fashioned roses are not only recognized as remarkably fragrant, but also disease-resistant. And the modern hybrid roses, with their long stems, make wonderful cut flowers. The main body of the Cranford Rose Garden is approximately an acre, and in that garden we have 5,000 rose plants, uh, a great number of them original plantings from 1927. The formal beds are planted out with more modern roses, hybrid teas, um, and bedding roses. And uh, they tend to be more fashionable. Some come in and out of fashion. Some do well and, and don't do well and are replaced. But the uh, old roses, the climbers and ramblers, are long-lived and, uh, and have been there for people's enjoyment for decades. The rose bed is anchored with two towering columns that are joined by a chain. The simple arbor encourages rambling roses to creep up the posts and along the chain. A great idea that could add height and interest to any garden. Encircling the, the 15 formal beds are um, paved brick walks, and at each intersection of the path there is uh, a crossover of iron pipe that has climbers and ramblers festooned across them. Next to the Rose Garden, another spectacular view awaits us at the Brooklyn Botanic Garden. The Cherry Esplanade showcases the foremost collection of cherry trees outside of Japan. Thousands of people plan their visit to the Botanic Garden, specifically during spring, just to see the awesome show. From late March to mid-May, the Esplanade is bursting with color. The Cherry Esplanade is a wonderful wide open lawn area flanked by wonderful allays of Norway maples and Kwanzaan cherry trees, which are a variety of Japanese flowering cherry. There are 76 of these planted on double axis, and when they bloom, they're quite a sight. The flowers are fully double, lots of petals. And when the petals shed, it's like pink snow flying through the air. So it's a wonderful place to be the latter part of April, the first couple of weeks in May. This spectacular venue provides a setting for visitors to relax and appreciate the magnificent beauty. On any given spring day, throngs of garden lovers come to the Cherry Esplanade with friends or family to experience the season in full bloom. From one of New York's premier garden showcases to a classical Baroque garden in the Tuscan countryside to Peter Paul Rubens' Renaissance Garden recreation in Belgium. We thank you for traveling with us and hope you'll join us again next time on World Garden Tour.